three continents, three countries, Australia, Britain and the United States, they don't measure themselves on any yardstick because they think they are the yardstick themselves. The pioneers of freedom and equality, an example for the world to follow. But three separate incidents have shown them the mirror. We start from the land of freedom and justice. Only for men, apparently. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has been accused of sexual harassment by eight women. Some of the testimonies are chilling. Former Albany State House reporter Jessica Bakeman writes, and I'm quoting, I never thought the governor wanted to have sex with me. It wasn't about sex. It was about power. He wanted me to know that I was powerless, when I was, that I was small and weak. Cuomo quizzed his aides on their sex life. He wanted them to wear heels to work. He made multiple unwanted advances, all from his position of power. The governor has an explanation for his actions. It's a time-tested one. His intentions, he says, were not malignant. I now understand that I acted in a way that made people feel uncomfortable. It was unintentional, and I truly and deeply apologize for it. I feel awful about it, and frankly, I am embarrassed by it. And that's not easy to say, but that's the truth. But this is what I want you to know, and I want you to know this from me directly. I never touched anyone inappropriately. I never touched anyone inappropriately. He says he feels embarrassed. He says he's sorry for making people uncomfortable. But guess what? A sorry doesn't cut it. On top of that, he's refusing to step down. Both the senators from New York want him gone. Multiple congressmen and state legislators feel the same, but Cuomo is adamant, especially after he was given a pass by the U.S. president himself. I think the investigation is underway and we should see what it brings us. Frankly, Joe Biden couldn't have said much else. The U.S. president has multiple sexual assault allegations against him. The Democrats conveniently forgot these allegations during the election. It held that Biden was running against Donald Trump, a serial offender. Eight accusers, a bipartisan demand for his ouster, yet Andrew Cuomo remains governor, the land of the free, has a gender caveat. Across the pond, Britain is a nation in mourning. On the 3rd of March, a 33-year-old woman, Sarah Everard, went missing in London. She was walking back from a friend's place. Seven days later, her body was found in a woodland near Ashford. A London policeman has been arrested in the case. He faces charges of kidnapping and murder. Everard's death was a wake-up call for Britain. Even in the country's busiest city, a woman was not safe walking home at night. Two institutions failed on the night of the 3rd of March. British society and British law enforcement. On Saturday, a vigil was held for Everard. What, un what unfolded in the next few hours was simply shocking. The Prime Minister says he's concerned about what he saw at the vigil. The London Mayor says it's unacceptable, but British women want to know who has got the solution. It's been such a overflow of emotions of like pure sadness, heartache, frustration and anger. And when obviously it was a police officer suspect, suspected, not charged yet, but it just brought, brought a sense of like, who can we trust? As a woman, like you think that you can trust the police to protect you and always stand up for you, but it's just apparent that, you know, you can't. It felt very isolating and alone. A policeman accused of murdering a woman, a harsh crackdown at the victim's vigil, and a police department that stands by its heavy-handed tactics. The British Bobbies stand exposed.
Meanwhile, Australian women are marching on the streets, 40 cities, tens of thousands of protesters. Some are calling it Australia's biggest uprising of women. They are protesting the rising number of assault cases in the country, many of them centered around the parliament. The government's response has been inadequate. At first, Prime Minister Morrison flat out refused to meet the protesters. But seeing the wave of public anger, he invited a delegation into Parliament House. This time, it was the protesters' turn to reject. It is good and right, Mr Speaker, that so many are able to gather here in this way, whether in our capital or elsewhere, and to do so peacefully to express their concerns and their very genuine and real frustrations. This is a vibrant Liberal democracy, Mr Speaker. Not far from here, such marches even now are being met with bullets, but not here in this country, Mr Speaker. Well, the Prime Minister said is emblematic of the problem. Not shooting protesters is not something you boast about. Remember, we're talking about democracies here. Equality and safety of women cannot be relative until everywhere is safe. Nowhere is truly safe for women. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.